So what do we need to do? Well, clearly, you know, if we are overtaxing natural systems, we have to step back. If there are too many of us using too much too fast, we have to find a way to back off on the accelerator. So there's no secret to that. Use less, and especially use less fossil fuels. What that amounts to is contraction. We've gotten used to the idea of economic growth, and we think that We've been taught to think that economic growth means using more and more, having more and more people using more and more per capita. Okay? That kind of growth has got to come to an end, one way or the other. Either we choose it or it's imposed by nature. There are some future trends that are inevitable. We will have less available energy. We will need more labor and agriculture because what happened during the 20th century? We replaced people with machines. And if we no longer have the cheap fuel for the machines, we're going to need more people. And where are we going to need them? Well, first and foremost, in food production. We're going to need massive replacement of infrastructure. Instead of highways with millions of cars, we're going to need towns where we can walk to get where we, where we need to go. We're going to need public transportation. That's, uh, that's, that uses electricity rather than liquid fuels because there aren't any good alternative sources of liquid fuels and there are lots of possible sources of electricity. We each should be looking at our personal sustainability. You know, where's my food coming from? Do I have a backyard garden? Maybe I should keep a couple of chickens. How well insulated is my house? What are my energy bills like? Could I bring those energy bills down? Could I get some other source of energy besides fossil fuels to heat my house or etc., uh, etc.? Et then we need to look at especially our local region. What could be supplied locally so that we're not dependent on long supply chains that stretch out to other countries, supply chains that could be interrupted as time goes on, as shortages of energy and materials appear. And then we also do need to be working at the national and international level to find ways to deal with global problems like climate change. Those cannot be fully solved at the local level because even if this community and a thousand like it do exactly the right things, if China continues to burn coal, we're toast. If the U.S. continues to build roads and, and people continue to drive cars the way they're doing now and generate their electricity with, with coal, we're toast. So we all have to coordinate this at a, a global scale as well. That's a pretty tall order, but in fact, it comes down to some pretty simple things. You know, fossil fuels have been an enormous economic boon, but they've created all sorts of problems including climate change, dependence on foreign sources, oil wars, uh, pollution of water and from fertilizer runoff and petrochemicals, uh, acid rain killing forests, on and on and on. If we can do this one thing, if we can reduce our consumption of fossil fuels and phase them out, we can solve all of those problems at the same time. That's not to say all human problems will go away. People have always had problems and always will. But the kinds of, of crises that we're facing now are planetary, lethal crises, like global climate change. We've never faced crises like that in previous human uh, generations, and hopefully we never will again. But we've got to get past this one, and in order to do so, we're going to have to get off fossil fuels. The next energy transition, inevitable. The, the challenge of global climate change makes the shift from fossil fuels necessary for planetary survival. Peak oil, gas, and coal mean that the transition will happen whether we do anything or not. It's just that if we let it happen without any kind of planning and foresight and intelligence, it's going to be very, very messy. Obviously, we have to deploy renewable energy sources. We have to relocalize our economies, shorten supply chains. In agriculture, we have to grow more of our food using less fossil fuels. That obviously means fertilizers, um, pesticides, herbicides, 
uh, more hand labor, smaller plots. Now that's, that's an enormous transition. There are lots of people already doing it. There's a huge organics movement here in the UK, the Soil Association, a practice called permaculture that I'm sure some of you at least are familiar with. Everyone should be studying permaculture and backyard gardening, transportation. As I've already said, we need to electrify transport wherever possible. And more important than that, reduce the need for transportation so that we can get what we need closer to home. Now, fortunately, we still have our strong suits going for us, starting with language. Language is a powerful, not only communication medium, but means of mobilizing and motivating human beings. And the reason I've come all this way to talk to you tonight is that I believe that using the power of language, it's possible to change our consciousness, change our behavior, and change our, the trajectory of our entire society. So it, I think it's important also for you to use the power of language with your friends and neighbors and families to help them understand the situation that we're in. Many of them won't want to hear about it. That's okay. Sometimes, you know, you say these things and it looks as though the person isn't hearing a single word and then you see them again two or three months later and they're telling someone else about it. What happened in the meantime? Who knows? Maybe it just takes a while to sink in. We, we should be putting, wherever possible, putting a, a positive spin on this because after all, if we get through the transition, life is going to be a heck of a lot better. We, we've had to give up a lot for the fast-paced fossil fuel society that we enjoy now. We've given up the, the strength of our communities, intergenerational solidarity, our connection with the natural world, on and on and on. All of these, these things aren't at peak. In fact, they, they have declined with the pace of, the, the quickening pace of modern society. So we can regain a lot of the things that actually make life worthwhile. And if we focus on those and start to think of those as the goals of human existence, then we can still have growth. We want to have societies that are growing, but what does that mean? Does that mean using more stuff or does it mean being happier? If we have happiness as our goal, we don't need to use more stuff. There's no single right way to accomplish all of the things that I've been talking to you about tonight. You, as a community, will figure it out on your own. You know, I talk to people all over the world in very different communities with very different circumstances, pursuing very different strategies to accomplish basically the same thing. Great. Um, and I think that's, that's one, of, one of the wonders of, of human beings. You know, we, we, we have such cultural diversity and that's, that's one of our great strengths. And that's one of the things that we've been giving up over the course of this last couple of hundred years. We've been you know, taking this one-size-fits-all attitude. All movies should be made in Hollywood. You know, who says? Um, so I salute you all for being here tonight once again and um, look forward to hearing from a distance perhaps how things are going in Forest of Dean in uh, the days and months ahead. I know you're going to have a, an exciting time creating a transition town here, and, uh, and I wish you all the best in the process. Thank you very much.